Hello, my name is Yuri. In this video, I would like to show you how to initially set up release management for Jira. First of all, we need to define the scope of our release management tool. Typically, a release management scope is defined by value stream. So for each value stream and for each set of interconnected products, we should create one release management board. So let's start from it. Navigate to board list and after that, create the board. And for this board, we can define a set of Jira projects and which will be involved in value creation. Let's select a few of them. As a result, all the projects and their releases will be visible on the board. As soon as the board is created, we will start seeing all already existing releases from selected projects. All unreleased releases will be moved to a not planned column, all done releases will be moved to production. So we could be able to see initial set of releases. As the next step, we can enrich our releases uh, with custom properties, which we could be used on our release management process. In order to do so, please navigate to the board settings, navigate to properties tab, and here you could be able to specify uh, properties for our releases. There are several types available, like string, paragraph, number, date, date, time, user, and so on and so forth, and also you could be able to define it here. In my case, I have already defined it a release type, rollout date, some global property, and rollback plan for packages. As soon as the properties will be defined, you will start seeing them here, and you can start to use them on the further stages of our release management process. As soon as we have configured the board, we can move beyond the fixed versions and start creating another release types. First, the most demanding one is creating cross-project versions. We are able just to select several projects, define some name, and as a result, uh, we could be able to create cross-project version in multiple projects. Another type uh, which could be useful is uh, virtual versions, epics and sprints. As soon as the properties are defined on board level, we could be able to use them for organizing releases on our board. So first of all, we can assign property value, like here, to establish that release type is major version. And after that, we can click here and enable our properties in search panel and search releases by this property. So we could be able to see only major releases in that way. Another way to arrange our releases is assignment of the tags. So if we will assign some tag to our release, we also could be able to filter them by... Also, another possibility is to use swim lanes, uh, for instance by tag, to arrange our releases in more uh, simple and more straightforward way. Also, we are able to use another capabilities of release management to keep more context within the release. First one, we can start editing comments, speaking to our team, and also we can monitor change history and uh, transition history of releases by checking the data on corresponding tabs. On the next steps, let's connect release management to Atlassian ecosystem to get information about commits, pull requests, branches, builds, and deployments. In order to do so, we can click at any version on the board, after that, try to enable code view, but by default it will be disabled, like in my case. Uh, we can click at attention mark, and after that click at configure button, and navigate to the link to get access um, for, to the page where we can generate the API token. Uh, we can create API token, give name, choose the expiration date, we should be mindful, so from one hand uh, we need to review it when the token will be expired, from another hand uh, we should keep it uh, relatively short, uh, just to um, decrease the security risk. After that let's get back to your release management, specify our email and after that specify a token which we just generated. After that we can click connect and uh, when we will get data or if we will get data about bills, deployments and uh, other DevOps data in our tickets like this one, we will get it visualized here and uh, we could be able to click at the details and uh, see uh, all the data which is connected to this ticket in issue view. Alternatively, we are able to navigate to commits and get all the data for the whole release and uh, get it aggregated in one view. The same with deployments, so we could be able to get all deployments uh, from our continuous integration tool which are connected to this release. Also, I would like to pay attention that uh, if you are using release management, uh, you could be able to uh, see release management data inside each Jira issue. So if, uh, you can open Jira issue and navigate to uh, apps configuration button and enable a release management panel here. 
As soon as it will be done, uh, you could be able to see all the data which is connected to this issue in context of release management inside the panel. So you could be able to see to what releases belongs to, to what packages belong to this release, uh, what is the progress, all deep links to uh, version and package. And also you can see on what environments uh, this uh, version and this issue is currently available. As the next step, we can start uh, customizing workflow on our board. You can see a workflow which is provided out of the box. If needed, we can navigate to board settings to version workflow tab. And from this tab, we are able to see all the steps uh, we have uh, currently on the board. And also we can define transition between the steps and uh, customize uh, what is allowed, what is not. Also for each step and transition, we can define restrictions by user, GQL, environment, or maybe check property, for instance that this property may only be available for major releases. And after that, uh, we can uh, start seeing updated workflow on our screen. So let me uh, show how it works. I have removed UAT. The UAT status is not available here. Also, uh, we can remove statuses only as there are no items within the status. At this stage, we can start using another views, such as roadmap, calendar, and list view in addition to our standard Kanban view. If we have a need in tracking complex releases which consist of multiple granular releases, this is the right time to set up it. In order to do so, we can use packages, and in order to create package, we can just select multiple releases on the board and create package out of it. We can specify name and also specify start date, release date, and also rollout end date if needed. Each package uh, can contain Apex, Sprints, Virtual Version, Cross-Project Versions and Projects. So, as soon as we will create it, we can start seeing packages as swim lanes on our Kanban board, or alternatively we can navigate to another board for packages and see packages on this board as a separate entity. So, and by opening each package, we can see all package details, which uh, will be aggregation of uh, all the data from all selected versions. In addition to that, we can use packages to do top-down planning. In this case, uh, we need to create uh, our package without any releases inside, like this one. So, for instance, uh, let's define product increment number one. And for this product increment, we can again define the start and release date when we plan to complete it. And after that, we can just select all the projects and release management will suggest create releases for these uh, projects. If they exist in the project, then they will be fetched to the package. Also, we can select a few more releases if needed. And after creation of the packages, so we can automatically create releases in corresponding projects and create entity which will aggregate every sync on our board. So this package uh, will be visualized here and uh, at the same time we could be able to see a package on our main board and to see all releases which belong uh, to this package. It would be very good uh, to make um, a combined view because from this stage uh, we could be able to track every granular release on the board and in addition to that we can see progress of the whole package and uh, track it on higher level. Also we can see packages on our roadmap view, also on the calendar and on the list view. So we can define group per package uh, here as well. In addition to that, uh, we can use uh, synchronization of the items within the package. So to synchronize releases and uh, keep the same name, description, start date and release date. Or alternatively, we can move to board settings and customize workflow of the packages on packages tab. So it will be done in absolutely the same way as for versions. And also we can define transition rules for packages in absolutely the same way. So as a result, we will get a hierarchy where we have a package on higher level and we will get versions on lower level. And each package may contain multiple versions. So we can always track progress of our version in addition to high-level progress of the big high-level business solution, which will be tracked by packaging. As the next step, we can move a uh, level below, and for each release, we can define intermediate milestones, uh, which will be representing uh, events on the way to release the version or release to production. We can define milestones such as uh, staging, testing, 
we can define date and um, all the data here we can define uh, milestone as uh, some key event like demo like integration uh, point and so on so forth and so for each milestone we can define date when it should be done we can see if it achieved or not and also we can see information that uh, milestone is outside of our release boundaries so then we can always track if we are in good shape or not let's uh, take a look at this milestone so i will update dates of my release and uh, now i could be able to see my milestone on our release on the roadmap and also we can track if it was achieved or not so then uh, with milestones we can show uh, level below releases and uh, track intermediate events uh, which belong to release after that granular releases could be tracked as release and also we can move level up and package multiple releases to uh, package i also would like to admit that we can track uh, milestones on package level as well in absolutely the same way like we are doing it in scope of versions Great, we are done with the basic setup of the application. Now we can configure add value functionality, which can help us to make a more holistic view on our release management process. First thing uh, which uh, could be useful here is environment inventory. So we can define environment types uh, like development, staging, integration, and uh, we are able to define a uh, name and color for each environment type. I will keep it and change it. And also we can create environments. At this stage we see some default environments, but let me add a few more. So for instance, I would like to add the production environment in United States and maybe I can assign some tag here just to indicate that it's US environment. I can write here some information about uh, environment URL, test credentials and any other useful information which we would like to share with our uh, teammates. And as soon as it will be created, uh, we will get another environment here. Also, I have assigned a tag and uh, I may use uh, this tag to classify uh, my environments uh, according to my needs. So if, uh, in other, I will get all generic one and US environments I can visualize here. And maybe I can just also create another uh, staging uh, in the US environment to visualize it on my board here as well. Ah, okay, well, it's not staging, let's uh, call it integration environment. Okay, uh, great. So then I have defined it, uh, several environments. Now I could be able to use them. First, the most obvious way to use the environments is open them here and after that for each environment uh, it would be possible to assign a version which is currently deployed to this environment. So we can assign version and also specify build number if relevant. Another option, we could be able to navigate uh, to our board and uh, open the same version from here and uh, assign environment to the version from the board, like this one. Uh, the same capability to assign build number is available here. Also, if we take a look at the card, uh, we could be able to see on what environment currently available this version, so that for our QA team or any other team, it would be very easy to monitor status of our environment and also track what versions deployed were. So if we would like to check if we can deploy uh, this version here, then we can always get this information and track it in two dimensions. First one, on what environments the version is available. Second one, we can always open each environment and get data uh, about this environment and uh, see what releases are currently deployed to this environment here. So it will provide uh, full visibility. Another big part of functionality which could be widely used in your organization is the release notes generation. We can automate it with release management and in order to set it up, uh, we should navigate to release notes tab. Here we could be able to see default templates for versions and for packages. Uh, we can click and see example, how it looks like. Also, we are able to create a new template. It will be also created based on our default data, just to simplify creation. So we can just call it somehow and also choose uh, what will be a source of the data. Is it going to be done for version or for package? In the release notes, uh, we have several capability. First of all, we can inject here images. By using inject image function, uh, we can add here a logo of organization or maybe any other images uh, which should be included to every release notes we will be generating based on this template. After that, we can inject here some variables, like and the variables are accessible from standard variables and from our variables which we have defined in scope of board. And also we can inject some macro, like environments table, milestone list, and also free text variables, which will be asked at generation phase. So let's use one example. So free 
text a variable added here and also uh, we can inject here gql table in gql table we have macro uh, which will be replaced to our actual uh, gql for every release uh, or package no matter what is the release type is it fixed version is it cross project fixed version is it epic is it virtual version is it sprint so the release management will always generate a correct name and make it accessible here also, uh, we can extend this GQL with some condition and after that we can choose uh, grouping if we would like to group it by some category, so like by epic or maybe any other field, uh, we support secondary grouping and also we can define a render type, is it going to be rendered as a table or maybe card layout. And after that, we could be able to select data, which will be represented in this table. We can choose any standard or custom field here. And by choosing the values, we can also define a render type. After template will be saved, so we could be able to generate or release node based on it uh, using uh, generate test report functionality. In that case, uh, we can select the release, which we are going to use for our test generation, put some free text variables and uh, we can just click generate release nodes button as a result we will get document which will be intersection of our template and selected releases i would like to pay attention that we can select multiple releases at the same time and they will be properly uh, combined into the release and we will get all the document body here and uh, if we want we can download it as html and after that we can convert it to a word document or maybe print to pdf like you can see now and uh, we can get a document based on it or alternatively and uh, what we recommend so uh, we can push this data to confluence so we can select uh, just space we can select parent page customize uh, name if needed we can inject also variables into the name and export the document to confluence and just in a few seconds uh, we will get absolutely the same document inside confluence uh, which could be shared with our teammates and uh, also shared within the organization so in this case uh, you could be able to easily generate release notes and some other documents uh, inside the organization and uh, we recommend to set up it at this stage because uh, you will get already all variables and all properties in place before moving to this part of uh, configuration of the tool also i would like to mention that you can generate uh, release notes uh, from package or release view so here you could be able to click the button select package and uh, do the same alternatively we can force people to generate release notes by setting up uh, such condition inside our step configuration so we would need to open a step where we need to generate release nodes enable option trigger release node generation and after that we can choose template which we would like to use save it and after that uh, uh, when we will be moving to the status release nodes will be automatically generated at this stage initial configuration of release management is complete uh, we also have a lot of different functionality, especially integration capabilities, which are not covered in this video, such as automation jobs, such as integration with continuous integration tools uh, with uh, source control, making release management central orchestration point of the whole ecosystem. But all these topics uh, are quite custom and uh, moving beyond this initial setup video. From our side, we would recommend that you will uh, complete initial setup. And after that, if you have questions on how to set up advanced uh, integrations and uh, some advanced features we would be happy to provide you personal consultation just contact us in the service desk and ask for it uh, or maybe you can find answers in some use cases which are provided in the documentation in each case do not hesitate to contact us our team would be happy to uh, investigate your case and provide a customized answer on how to configure the tool for your specific case thank you very much for your attention uh, it was a pleasure for me to present application and i hope this short video will help you to make initial setup